For Hegel, philosophy synthesizes with death. Thus, philosophy reconciles corruption. We see this corruption occur in Ionian, Athenian, and Roman society with the state's decline. Hegel's reconciliation of corruption would have to reconcile the corruption of the bourgeois Christian world. This mystical union of reason and actuality is rejected by Marx as well as Kierkegaard, who each stick to their one-sided perspective. Hegel's philosophy calls for the constant negation of any said system. Such a philosophy is akin to the spiritualism and progressivism of Joachim of Fiore. Such a perspective of disestablishing order is of course deemed heretical by any system, and thus outcast to preserve itself from becoming an eternally ambivalent being. Hegel's philosophy amounts to destruction, or perhaps we could say carries a deconstructionist or Derridian aspect to its element. By reconciling reason and religion, one must acknowledge there is no God, only the concept of I, which deals with itself. Critiquing Hegel's philosophy, Marx destroys the bourgeois capitalists, as Kierkegaard criticizes the bourgeois Christians. However, just like how Joachim's trinity gave spiritualists the power to transform history, Hegel's dialectics enable others for the future to reject bourgeois society and revolutionize the status quo with the weapons forged by his philosophy. Marx and Kierkegaard work on attacking the bourgeois society from opposite ends, one in a material aspect and the other in a spiritual sense. Marx sees self-alienation caused by capitalism, while Kierkegaard shows the self-alienation experienced by Christians in terms of Christianity. Marx's critique of Hegel concerns itself with the critique of religion. Based on Bauer and Fuhrerbrock, religion is the sigh of the oppressed creature and the opium of the people. To Kierkegaard, politics begins and ends on the earth, while religion deduces its origins from above and attempts to elevate the earth to heaven. Marx and Kierkegaard both come to the conclusion that no secular system can implement equality. To Kierkegaard, only with the eternity of religion is one able to attain human equality, a non-worldly equality. This rings somewhat true to Marx and the Hegelian left, who state that the misfortune of their time is that time itself refuses to hear of eternity. Time becomes temporal, of what Kierkegaard calls a time of disintegration. Kierkegaard criticizes Hegel with his concept of irony, which cannot be dialectically sublated. Hegel's system is an absolute system, but denies ethics. The quantitative aspects of world history are opposed to the qualitative dialectic of the individual. The individual is what is being lost. People are preoccupied with world history. People cling together, in fear of being an individual, traveling in massive herds. Marx and Kierkegaard also criticize Hegel in terms of reality, noting on how reality cannot be expressed in abstract language. Reality is a choice between this or that. Each decision we make requires a leap. For Marx, this leap is from the realm of necessity to the realm of freedom. To Kierkegaard, the leap is from the world to God. Revolutionary humanity is in a state of leaping, fractured and longing for unity. Marx and Kierkegaard vary in terms of self-alienation, though. Marx sees society as isolated individuals in which man is alienated from the collective species. Kierkegaard sees the Christian masses alienated from their individual selves. Either way, both are founded in the disintegration or fall of the world from grace, a noted feature in Gnostic apocalypticism. Marx acts counter to Adam Smith's concept of private ownership. Private ownership was to be a right founded in labor, guaranteed for man's freedom and independence. But this also led to him being alienated from others. As private ownership develops, also under the libertarian guise of freedom, it is likewise founded in labor. As science develops more one-dimensional techniques, the self-alienation of man intensifies. Industrial capital is the perfected form of private property in this sense accumulating wealth from labor. But labor is not just a redeeming nature for man or a positive thing as Hegel thought. Hegel's philosophy deals with man as spirit, of course, and not as an object. Of course, in capitalistic society, man is treated as an object, exploited for his labor to produce wealth and profit for private ownership. Hegel's dialectic is a dialectic of the idea, not of actuality. Marx opposes Hegel's dialectic of spirit for his dialectical materialism of nature. The self-alienation of man is not a logical, 
but an economic process. Money is the spirit and source of self-alienation. All becomes commodity. Money is the essence of existence, an alien essence that alienates. The commodity takes on a supernatural or mystical character, a religious-like fetishism. Communism thus becomes an expression of a nulled private property. Communism negates private property and the individual with Hegelian dialectical means. Communism transcends private property and self-alienation, returning man back to a social being. To Marx, communism resolves the conflict between man and nature, between man and man, between becoming and being, etc. Society is thus the perfected unity and essence of man with nature. Kierkegaard, however, only before God are humans equal. In the world, they are a multitude, but before God, they are an individual. Secular ideology essentially abolishes God, eternity, and man's relationship with the divine. Thus, between Marx and Kierkegaard, there is a division between the secular and the divine. With both, however, is the motif of self-alienation, a fall into exile and the path to redemption. To Marx, the collapse of capitalism and the dawn of a classless society is the apocalypse. A leap is made into the realm of freedom from necessity. To Kierkegaard, the human race is fatally ill, suffering from a spiritual sickness that will only be alleviated by eternity. Spiritual leaders will be needed to turn men into individuals. Communism has a religious strength, but in demonic combination. Kierkegaard prophesizes the Antichrist in communism. Marx's proletariat revolution stands in opposition to Kierkegaard's religious revolution of martyrs. The individual theist versus the atheistic community. And so comes the continual clash. Western existence is inscribed in the conflict between the higher, via Hegel, and the lower, via Marx and Kierkegaard. Existence means both ecstasy, which is high, and naked existence, which is low. The coincidentia oppositorum is needed to mend the rift between the high and the low, between the inner and outer. Man, in making himself the measure of all things and trying to find self-salvation, makes himself the shadow of God. The serpent beguiles man into misrecognizing himself as godlike. The shadow turns the world to night. Only when we stare to this shadow and understand its source does a new day dawn, and all will be inverted from what it once was. The holy terror passes judgment, and history tracks along from the mystery of error towards the revelation of truth. For that Armageddon and Apocalypse is true eschatology.